The year was 1999 when the Wachowski siblings introduced us to the simulation theory with the first film in the Matrix series. And it would be four years before philosopher Nick Bostrom wrote his essay, Are You Living in a Computer Simulation? Yet, approximately 2,300 years before the release of the movie, Plato had already addressed the concept of simulation with his allegory of the cave, possibly putting the final word on it. At moments like these, one can't help but think that positive sciences are essentially the history of metaphysics, a branch of philosophy. The simulation theory was first introduced as a scientific hypothesis in 2003 by philosopher Nick Bostrom. This theory suggests that a technologically advanced civilization could create a detailed simulation that imitates the lives of its ancestors. According to Bostrom's ancestor simulation concept, if such a civilization could create such a simulation, it is highly likely that we, too, are living in such a simulation. Furthermore, Bostrom implies that societies that fail to produce descendants capable of creating simulations would be unsuccessful. In the introduction to his 2003 essay, Bostrom writes, It is likely that the vast majority of minds like ours belong not to the original race but to people simulated by the advanced descendants of the original race. In such a case, it would be rational to think that it is more likely we are among simulated minds rather than original biological ones. In essence, Bostrom is politely suggesting that it is inevitable that we are in a simulation. To address the most significant critique of his argument right from the start, he references the growth story of computer processing power. Let's take a simple look at this. As you can see on the screen, the processing power difference between the Apple I, designed in 1976, and today's Apple M3 processor is 10 million times greater, even when not considering various other factors. According to the experts' detailed calculations, the performance difference is even greater. But if we accept a factor of 10 million and note that quantum computers have yet to be introduced, it's clear that computer power in 100 years will be well suited for creating large simulations. Therefore, at this rate of development, creating simulations on the scale of the universe would be merely a matter of time. Once we move past this stage, we know that for the hypothesis to advance to at least the level of theory, it needs to be tested. When we examine the experiments conducted for this purpose, the first that comes up is the double-slit experiment. Yes, you heard that right. The double-slit experiment is one of the critical tools in testing the simulation theory. In 2017, former NASA physicist Thomas Campbell and his team designed some quantum experiments based on the classic double-slit experiment to test the simulation theory. These experiments tested the render moment hypothesis to see if the universe is a simulation. To put it simply, this test examined whether the system running the simulation would have limited resources, just like in computer games, regardless of processing power growth. In other words, it proposed that no matter how advanced technology becomes, there would have to be some limitations in the simulation due to limited processing power and the energy required to run it. In simpler terms, the hypothesis suggests that the simulation renders the visuals only when the observer becomes aware of reality, meaning the render process happens only at this stage, and it doesn't waste resources by rendering when the observer isn't looking. For instance, since you are currently focusing directly on the screen and can't see what's happening behind you, only the elements within your field of vision are being rendered, while the ones behind you, which you can't see, aren't rendered, saving resources. This situation may sound familiar. When there is no observation or measurement, subatomic particles do not exhibit particle behavior, but they do when observed. Campbell and his team noticed this similarity which led them to test the render hypothesis based on the simulation theory with a modified double-slit experiment. In the experiment, pairs of entangled photons were used, with one photon projected onto a screen to create an interference pattern. The other photon was recorded by a detector that captured which path information. 
In essence, one of the entangled photons was sent through the slits without being measured, resulting in an interference pattern as expected. The other entangled photon was measured in every case, but access to the measurement data was either restricted from the observer or left unrestricted. When the access to the information was made available to the observer, the entangled photon exhibited particle behavior. However, the photon that was measured by the detector but whose measurement information was erased continued to exhibit particle behavior. Campbell and his team interpreted this as supporting the idea that, as predicted by the simulation theory, the universe is only rendered when the observer has access to information. Although this experiment and its results are not widely accepted by the scientific community, it has been acknowledged as a contribution to the simulation theory. One of the primary criticisms is that the results of the experiment can already be explained by quantum theory, meaning the outcome cannot be directly considered as supporting the simulation theory. The second main criticism is that if a simulation exists, it cannot be disproven by any scientific experiment, as the simulation itself could manipulate the results. However, there were no criticisms regarding the experimental setup, data retention, or statistical outcomes. We should mention that we will cover other experiments conducted on the simulation theory in our upcoming videos, as this theory is slowly gaining traction and the conservative physics community seems close to no longer dismissing it. The idea that the entropy approach could suggest the universe might be programmed, according to the principles of optimization and data compression, has piqued the interest of physicists, serving as a prime example of this trend. According to our research team, whether or not there is a designer, our universe is a simulation governed by its current set of rules, and every simulation, by necessity, must operate based on optimization rules. Yet, until we catch a bug in the simulation, we cannot fully accept this theory. See you in our next video.